Okay, so let's talk about what can cause allele frequencies to change in populations. So one thing that we're going to talk about a lot in here is going to be the Hardy-Weinberg principle. And so I'd like you to read it and then we will go over this. So just take a second and read it and then um, hopefully you'll recognize some of that stuff. So go ahead and read it. And hopefully you notice these words at the end, segregation and recombination. Those should be words that sound vaguely familiar to you from Bio 111. Um, segregation is talking about how you can have two parents that have offspring that don't all look identical, right? So they have different traits and characteristics. And that kind of goes with the fact that recombination has happened to cause that, where the chromosomes have come together and exchange genetic information and then come apart. So Hardy-Weinberg principle is saying that Allele frequency is not going to change over time as long as um, certain conditions are met. And the only thing that can happen to this population is the stuff like segregation and recombination. So if those five conditions are met, we say that the population is under Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And so that's saying even with recombination and all that kind of stuff that the gene pool and allele frequencies should stay the same as long as these five conditions are met. So let's look at these five conditions. The population size needs to be very large. Random mating is occurring. What I mean by that is you cannot predict who's going to mate with who. There's no sort of um, present uh, way to tell. Um, mutation cannot take place, so the DNA has to remain intact. No migration of genes from other sources, so the genes actually, um, you can't have any flow happening, and we'll talk about that. And no natural selection can happen. So, if you look at those, um, what do you think? Do you think that's possible in nature? Do you think that happens very often in nature? Hopefully you're thinking, hell no, that is not going to happen. And that's because it doesn't really happen. So, what that means is, populations are constantly evolving because if all five of these are actually met then the allele frequencies will stay the same and when allele frequencies stay the same population is not evolving so if any of these gets violated what's going to happen is allele frequencies will change and then you're going to end up with evolution happening okay so going along with this mathematicians have gotten together and made these lovely equations p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1 and p plus q equals 1 I am not going to talk about this here. Um, we will talk about this in lab, but there are ways that you can actually um, assign allele frequencies on a population and then figure out if it's evolving. So we'll do that in um, class. So does this work in nature? We just agreed no. And anytime you deviate from Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, evolution is happening. So anytime allele frequencies change, we have ev evolution happening. Okay. So, what causes allele frequencies to change? These are called the, called the five agents of evolutionary change. The first one is going to be something called genetic drift. Um, and genetic drift is going to be where all of a sudden you have a frequency of an allele jump, like really, really high or something like that. And uh, the two ways that that can happen is through something called founder effects and bottlenecking. So we'll talk about founder effects first. And that's where you're going to have a few individuals from a larger area uh, population colonizing a new area. So you've got a big group of individuals. A couple of them are going to go off and start their own population. However, their genetic makeup doesn't really represent the original gene pool. And so what happens is they kind of fizzle out because maybe they have a disorder in the population or something like that. So I have a little slide that I've made of this to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So um, we've got this original population. You can see there's a lot of diversity going along here with these butterflies. Um, let's just say this is all one species, just to pretend. And let's say um, to have that green is actually going to be bad. The green is going to give you some sort of genetic defect that will cause you not to make it um, very far in life, right? So let's say that this population I just circled decides to go off and become its own population. Now, Originally, if I take the circle away, the frequency of that genetic defect in this population is maybe, I don't know, 20% or something like that. But when this population goes off and starts its own, now that genetic defect has jumped up to 50%, right? And so the probability of this population making it by themselves, not very good because these guys are going to be putting their genetic defect into the gene pool, right? So that's going to be an example of founder effect. Now, we also have bottlenecking effect. 
And bottlenecking effect is going to be where you have some sort of disaster that causes a really, really big reduction in a population, and those that are left are either very genetically similar to one another, and so that's very risky because if something comes through that they're prone to dying from, they're all going to die because no one has an advantage over anyone else. Um, or you could have um, them, once again, not being a good representation of the original gene pool. So if we go back to the PowerPoint, whoops, all right, here, uh, there's our founder effect. Okay, so genetic bottlenecking um, is just saying that originally you have all this diversity, now only a few of them are going to survive, and now that surviving population doesn't look at all like the original population, right? So that's going to be bottlenecking. Um, this is actually happening with the prairie chicken. I am sorry, is that not the coolest looking chicken you've ever seen? Um, but anyway, the prairie chicken used to live all over Illinois in all this green area that you see here. And now this is where it's found. And that's due to development and agriculture, right? So these farmers are buying up these big farms. It's not good habitat for the prairie chicken. And now what's happening is they're hardly found anywhere. And what happened was there's only a few left. They started breeding with one another, and they started inbreeding. And now they've become so genetically similar that it's very dangerous that they could all get wiped out by a disease or something. So what they're doing now is they're actually shipping in prairie chickens from all over the um, surrounding areas where they're healthy, and they're having them mate to see if they can up their genetic diversity. Some people are like, are you kidding me? It's a chicken. Like, really? We're going to spend money on this? And other people are saying, well, they were there first, and here we are screwing up, so maybe we should do something to help them. And that's a very highly debated kind of thing that we'll talk about in class two is, you know, that kind of um, attitude towards this stuff. Okay, so that's going to be um, genetic drift. Um, in the next video, we'll start talking about the other parts of the Hardy-Weinberg.